I really don't mean to keep disappearing. If I'm being honest though, it may be a while before I can make uploading a regular thing. The whole story is too long to tell. Let me share some happy thoughts instead. So I bought a Mutants and Masterminds campaign called The Reign of Cats and Dogs, and me and the other player decided to roleplay the protagonists of stories we're writing. Oh, by the way, I'm writing a book. Look forward to it. His character was Amelia, who can turn into a hummingbird or a human-hummingbird hybrid. My character was Rinna, and I don't have art for her, so we're going to use fan art of Flandre Scarlet without wings. And I should mention here that my group isn't too picky about things like power level limits. As long as both of us are vaguely in the range of level 10 or under, who cares about how the points are used? So I took negative 1 intelligence, negative 1 awareness, 14 strength. Y'all know Starfire from Teen Titans, right? Okay, her, but adorable and mentally broken. We love this combo because both girls are about the same age and disposition, and we sincerely believe they would be BFFs in spite of the fact we did not design them with the other in mind. So that's what we brought to the table. Amelia and I went out shopping, and I wanted to go to the jewelry store where all the commotion was because it looked like fun. Rena, there's a police car there. Police car has pretty lights on it! Rena wants one! The GM had some good instincts here. Something made a car flip, never did find out what. I rolled agility to catch it and prevent it from landing on a person, and that was the reason the police trusted us enough to go inside and talk to the gunmen with hostages. All I understood was go in and get the hostages out, but like, what a hostage. So I went in and yelled, everyone who's a hostage, come to Rena! Amelia turned into a hummingbird and rolled stealth to sneak past the gunmen and started undoing ropes with their beak while I did something comparable to negotiations. They just didn't look like they were doing the whole shopping thing right. It didn't fit with Amelia's explanation of how money works. But then they did something I understood very well. They fired a gun at me, and as the bullet bounced off me and plinked harmlessly to the floor, I asked them one question. How? Well, are we using our outside attacks? I asked before putting one of my new friends into a wall. The other one surrendered, and Amelia and the police were able to safely get the hostages out. And after Amelia made sure we were friends with the gunmen, because she's adorable, the GM asked if we would like to inspect the hole in the floor. What does Amelia think is down there? Uh, dirt? So we flew down together, and Amelia was under the impression that it was a retired superhero headquarters. But I still believed I was in the jewelry store, so I picked up something I thought Dr. Ainsworth might like and flew back up to the counter. Rena found a brain with machine parts on it in the lower floor. How much money for it? Oh, who's Dr. Ainsworth? He's the scientist who stole Rena's childhood, mind controlled her to see him as her best friend, and turned her into a monster. So Amelia did all the investigation, and after some time learned that the Eye of Chaos was missing from the trophy hall of that hidden HQ, and according to her contact, it is an artifact that can turn thoughts into reality, but at the cost of the user's sanity. That sounds like something Dr. Ainsworth needs! I cried out cheerfully, and Amelia agreed to help me find the Eye of Chaos. Why? Cause we friends! Our search took us in part to a library, and I was told to wait outside because books don't go well with the fact I have to roll awareness not to set things on fire with my touch, and then we got one of Dr. Ainsworth's assistants to make us a magic detector. Slightly out of character, since Ainsworth Enterprises is supposed to be a completely sci-fi affair, but we needed the plot moving, and this led us to the home of Karen. An investigation of her laptop revealed she planned to empower animals so that they could fight for their rights, because the manager at Wendy's wouldn't do it for them. When we saw squirrels rip apart a whole tree on their own, I noted that these animals must have an amazing doctor, because I think that's what doctors do, become your friend and give power. Now, Amelia's player wasn't sure where things were supposed to go from here, but I happened to have a look at the campaign before we began, so I gave a little nudge. Does Amelia think the animals at the zoo got the same doctor? And Amelia's player widened his eyes as he suddenly understood where the plot was going. Rena, I don't think we should- Rena wants to go to the zoo! But take Rena to the zoo! So we went to the zoo, meeting many super-powered animals along the way. My favorite was the hive mind pigeons who sang food glorious food from Ice Age 2 and rolled intimidation. Amelia failed that check, I had the fearless advantage, which makes me immune to intimidation, and then I failed the awareness check to see how afraid my friend was and sang along with the pigeons. The GM's favorite was the nice little hedgehog named Alice that came along and explained that we must take the Eye of Chaos from Karen so that the animals would lose their powers. Unfortunately, 
This would include her. Don't worry, Rena knows good doctor who can make Alice smart again. I rolled persuasion, the GM rolled inside against it to see if there was anything messed up about my enthusiasm, and I won. On reaching the zoo, we were met with Godzilla. Owie, that's the biggest lizard Rena's ever seen. Rena, stop the lizard from hurting the people. What? That lizard is harmless. Rena thinks he's a good boy. And then he ate some people, but they lived. I gave it a Heimlich maneuver by flying into its stomach and lifting it into the air. The final battle against Karen was where I delivered one of my best lines. First, Karen dubbed herself Moonbeam for reasons only she understands, to which I said, Hi, Moonbeam! Does Moonbeam know where Karen is? Rena needs to see her. It was at this point Karen was given an upgrade by the GM, a special move called the Karen look, and we both failed that will check. Getting to the actual combat, Karen was level 12 and had next to no stats and the removable flaw on all her powers, so she had a bunch of points to put into those powers. Also, she had minions, but that last part was easily made up for the fact that I have multi-attack on my energy projection. The strategy was simple. Amelia took the Eye of Chaos and peaced out while I made sure they were too busy getting fried to do anything. Moonbeam did so good. Moonbeam's doctor should be proud. So at the end of the day, Karen was put behind bars. I came back from my supposedly normal shopping trip with a 20-foot lizard tail, a talking hedgehog, some cyborg brain-looking thing I found in a jewelry store, and the Eye of Chaos, a magical artifact straight out of legend. Oh yeah, Alice got to keep her powers along with a couple of other animals. After meeting the good doctor, though, she decided to go live with Amelia. Everyone lived happily ever after. Oh, no,